The 2021 scalper pandemic is seeing supplies of the latest gen Nvidia RTX cards being snapped up by miners. But back in the crypto boom of 2017, the cards that started it all back then were based on AMD's Polaris. After four years on the retail roller coaster, the price on the RX 480 currently stands not far from where it was all those years ago. With its architecture shared with the outgoing PS4 Pro and Xbox One X, and optional 8GB of VRAM, has it stood the test of time? As someone who frequently builds PCs to sell, I've bought a lot of RX 470s and 480s over the years. Every now and again it seems miners ditch their cards en masse and sell them at a fraction of their initial value, only to try and snap them up again once the price of Ethereum goes back up. I picked up this particular Sapphire card at the end of last year for £120, which is more than I usually pay for them, but I've never owned an 8GB variant before and I felt like it might make for an interesting inclusion in my series, Tales from the Scalper Pandemic. These Sapphire cards are among my favourite aesthetic designs in all graphics cards, along with the last two generations of Nvidia FE cards, so pardon me if there's more B-roll than usual. For those who haven't watched the other videos in the series yet, I'm testing these older cards out in a modern yet modest PC build. The CPU, a Ryzen 3 3100, is a pretty excellent match for the RX 480 and is pretty reasonably priced, though a modern Intel i3-10100 or an older i7-6700 or similar spec CPU should give similar results. I feel like an older AMD Ryzen, for example a Ryzen 5 1400 or earlier quad-core Intel i5s might not get the full benefit of this GPU in some games, particularly those that deliver higher frames per second. Valorant is just one of those games that don't really benefit much from this setup. In fact, the measured 177 FPS average and 111 FPS 1% lows are actually lower than those I got from the R9 290X, so the graphics card is clearly not being used to its fullest in this title. Warzone, however, is fully utilising the RX 480, with 1080 low settings delivering over 100 FPS average and lows of 77. If you're feeling adventurous, you might be able to turn textures up, though this buggy mess of a game often has issues loading textures, and I don't much want to lose any more sleep on this game. I, I, I don't really want to talk about it now, but I have plenty to say in my video on the GTX 1050 Ti. <sighs> Returning for a moment to my happy place, Fortnite is proving to work very nicely on Radeon cards these days, and the RX 480 continues that trend. At competitive settings in 1080, we saw an average of 220 FPS, with lows just under 140. And if you prefer your visuals a little more crispy, then turning up to high with epic draw distance delivers almost 90 FPS with 1% lows of 70. <laughs> Valheim is kind of all over the place performance wise and I'm hoping by the time this video goes out there will have been some performance optimizations. but at the time of testing this was still unreasonably demanding. At 1080 high settings I saw an average of 42 and lows of 20 FPS, so despite all our VRAM it's probably still worth dropping to medium. Speaking of medium, this game is an absolute beast to run, but in my opinion the higher quality settings are a must to really enjoy the game, with improved lighting and shadows in particular adding a completely different dimension. Despite the newer architecture and extra VRAM, we're barely seeing any improvement over the R9-290X, with averages of 32 and lows of 15. Do 
Doom Eternal hasn't challenged any of the cards I've thrown at it yet, and as this is the most powerful so far, it should be no surprise to see some decent frame rates. 1080 medium gives an average of 117 FPS and 1% lows of 90. This is only the second card I've ran the Valhalla benchmark on, as this title's pretty strict about DirectX 12 compatibility. I tried running a patch to circumvent this on the R9 270X and 280, to no avail. Regardless, this card seems able to play at 1080 medium, with an average just shy of 60 FPS and lows of 45. I don't test games at 4K, I actually have a whole video planned about 4K gaming and why, in my opinion, it's been a failure. Regardless, as the PC doesn't have access to the PS4's checkerboard rendering method, I don't think 4K at 30fps is even possible in Horizon Zero Dawn on the RX 480. In 1080 at original settings, however, we can see 60fps averages with lows of 45, which, as far as I can tell, isn't possible on the previous gen console. Looking to the other horizon on my test suite, that being Forza Horizon 4, the built-in benchmark returns a GPU score of 108 FPS average and 93 1% lows. Given just how good this performance is, I thought I'd give high settings a go and saw only a 5 to 7 frame dip to 101 average and 87 low. Cyberpunk 2077, at 720 resolution, actually doesn't offer very different performance with the RX 480 from the considerably older R9 290X, with averages of 63 and lows of 34, though the 1080 results are substantially better. Averages on the 480 break 40 FPS, and the 1% lows don't dip below 30, so double buffer V-Sync on a conventional TV or monitor should be a viable option and give reasonably smooth gameplay. Time Spy returns a graphic score of 4265, which is less than 10% above the score for the R9 290X. As the 290X was a flagship card and the 480 is technically a mid-range card, this shouldn't be a big surprise. It's not uncommon for successive generations to move up a tier in performance, but the R9 300 series was something of an anomaly in that regard, being a minor refresh of the 200 series. I don't think I've seen much of a benefit of the extra VRAM here. The best example I can think of is Forza Horizon 4, where I was able to turn up the quality from medium to high with virtually no FPS impact, but aside from that benefit for image quality, I don't think any of the games tested would be rendered unplayable on the 4GB version of the card. What do you think? Let me know below, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.